All right, everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to use the Greenlee 881 hydraulic pipe bender. And I apologize right off the bat. I don't know all these terms just because I'm new to it and it's been a while since I've used it. But anyways, you're going to take your pipe and grab your measurements, assuming that you already have your measurements already calculated. Um, you can also use a app on your phone to do this. But once you do have your measurements, go ahead and mark your first and second mark for your bends. And I'm using a slip coupling to draw a nice circle around the pipe using a wet erase marker. And that is basically so you can erase it later. So if you use a Sharpie, basically it's gonna be a lot harder to get off. Um, basically you can just squirt some simple green on here and wipe it off later. And then this is the piece I'm not sure what it's called. I'll just call it the U-shaped piece. So you're gonna take this U-shaped piece and then put the, um, the, the little bar and the pin through it um, to secure it into place. And this is going to be to hold the pipe, and this is what it looks like up close. Um, obviously, I don't have the U-shaped piece in right now, but you're going to put the bar through there and the pin to hold it into place. Um, and then once you do that, you can slide your pipe into place. Um, there's two different ways you can do this. You can slide the pipe in after, like I'm doing, or you can slide the pipe through first and then put the U-shaped piece on afterwards. I find that way a little bit harder, um, so I like to put the U-shaped piece on first and then put the pipe in afterwards. Um, so if you can't get it through, you can release the pressure on the machine and then um, slide it through. And then you're going to line up your mark next, and sometimes this is, can be kind of tricky, um, especially if you're just learning this for the first time. You kind of have to pull the machine forward and then line it up, and then you kind of push it back to lock into place. And if you're trying to line it up, it is easier to pull it forward, and then you can kind of also... Put, wedge something in there like channel locks or a wrench to hold it forward while you adjust it to line up your mark and then take it out the piece that's holding it like the wrench or whatnot and then uh, push it back and line it into place as you can see I'm kind of struggling here um, and then once you go ahead and get that lined up you're going to put some pressure on the machine and make sure your hydraulic press is um, pushed in the down position which I will show you here in a second um, and then also make sure to tighten down your pipe so um, it can bend put your pipe in the center and use the chain to wrap around the right little piece right here lock that into place and then twist the dial and tighten it down um, so that's what I'm doing right here putting the chain around the pipe and then twisting it to lock it into place um, and then I'll show you the hydraulic re release mechanism here in a second. Um, so once you get all that and you're ready to go, take your digital. Um, you can e either use a digital, um, a digital uh, protractor, which I'm using from Klein Tools, and then also use using a swivy right here for the anti-dog leg or the no dog. Uh, so basically one screw tightens to the pipe and the other screw holds it level into place. You're going to want to do that. So once you're done with your first bend, you flip over the pipe 180 degrees and then it won't have a dog leg in it. And basically a dog leg means that um, it's not exactly um, bent at 180 degrees. So if you do your first bend and then flip it over um, and it's off, then it, when you go to hang your pipe, it's going to be um, going at an angle which you don't want. Um, so once you get all that stuff done, lined up, you get your anti-dog, get your digital protractor zeroed out, um, you're going to use the button right here, and the, basically the on is just to add more bend, and the off doesn't really do anything um, as far as I remember. So you're just going to hold down the on button until you get to the degrees that you want. I can't remember the degrees I was exactly doing in this video, but there is going to be some spring back. So if you're doing a 22 degree bend, then you're going to want to do like a 23.2 or something like that. Um, each machine is different, so you're going to have to learn that. And here is the release mechanism right here. Um, so once you get your um, bend done, you release the hydraulic and that um, you basically pull this lever down right here and that releases the hydraulic. And then you can take your pipe out and then readjust it for the second bend. Um, and basically you're just going to repeat the process. You're going to release the chain um, and then slide the pipe down and then line it up with the second mark um, and then tighten down the hydraulic again, the hydraulic lever, and then 
line up your marks and then once you line up your marks I forgot the next step put down the hydraulic slide the pipe through take the chain off um, slide it up slide the pipe through to the second mark and then the next step that we're going to add right now is uh, making sure that the pipe is like I said 180 degrees um, basically just flip the pipe over 180 degrees and then line up the level uh, the swivy which is what I'm using uh, that's just the brand of it you're gonna take your no dog level and make sure it's at 180 degrees level um, and then tighten it back down using the hydraulic pressure uh, on button again to lock into place and then uh, zero out the digital protractor again and then you're going to start by doing your bend until you get to the degrees that you want matching the first degrees so if you're doing a 23.2 when you flip it over do a 23.2 again on your second bend and make sure that is making sure that your calculations are correct because if you do the wrong calculations even with the right bend it's going to be wrong um, so you're going to want to make sure you're using the right calculations or using a app on your phone to do um, that's going to tell you the measurements for the bends um, and I've done it both ways I personally don't have the app on my phone um, but I know my coworkers do um, I think it's like two or three dollars in the app store um, and I forget which one specifically that they use um, but the one that they do have is really good and it tells you like all the different benders hand benders hydraulic benders and like all the deductions and everything per um, the differences and stuff like that per machine so it's really nice um, so I'll probably be getting that eventually but I just haven't yet um, and then once you do your second bend obviously this pipe is a little bit short so um, it's not the longest tail end because it was just a scrap piece once you're done with your bend take off your swivy and then pull out the the pin and the bar on the u-shape and then you're pretty much done so hopefully that wasn't too quick. I'm just trying to do this kind of in one take, but once you do this and if you do it correctly, then you're going to get uh, the results that you want granted that your calculations are correct. So you can measure that off of the ground is one way to measure it um, to check your to check your rise if you're just doing a basic offset, uh, which I'm doing in this video, or you can put it up against the wall and check it there and make sure that it is straight. Um, if you're doing a 12 inch rise, Make sure it's 12 inches at the back of the bend and the front of the bend. And that's pretty much it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully this gave you guys some insight. Hopefully it helped you out. See you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.